Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. We're bringing back an old one with a new tip on accounting for trade-ins. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 and I'll get you over whatever hump you encounter with respect to QuickBooks and other software programs that you want to use to help increase the efficiency and the productivity within your business. We always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Okay, some of you may remember and you may have seen even recently that I had done uh, a video on accounting for trade-ins with QuickBooks. I did it a couple of years ago. And over time, what happens is I, we, I learn new tricks, new ways of doing things. And recently I did a private session with somebody who'd seen that video, called me up, asked for some additional help. And uh, I was able to show him some of the newer things that I've learned that make this process even more efficient. And... Uh, I realized it's probably time to do another updated screencast on it. So once again, we're going to be looking at an Audi A8 this time. I think last time I did the, the R8, the sports car. I guess I'm getting older. I'm more into the luxury thing instead of the sports thing. But we're going to pretend that we're selling one of these, and we're going to take a trade in as part of the transaction. So we'll come over here to QuickBooks, and uh, let's just close all the windows here. And the first thing we need to do, of course, we need to invoice the customer, right? Let's bring this over. Always right. Mr. Always right walks into the door. We'll add him in quickly as a customer. And then we're going to sell our 2012 Audi A8. We're going to sell it for about $80,000. Now, the trade-in is really nothing more than a method of payment. And it's tempting to, and a lot of people will do this, you can set up an item that serves as a payment type item and put it right on the body of the invoice to show the trade-in. The reason I don't like to do that is because, and this is just my personal opinion and feeling, you can disagree, but to me it skews the invoice total. Because what happens is I put that uh, you know payment in here, whether it's the trade-in or I want to show you know a cash that they paid down, it, it skews it because it reduces the total invoice. I like to know that I have a document in QuickBooks that is sort of pure in that it shows me this is the true total that I'm charging the customer for whatever items are on here. And as soon as I put a payment item in the body of the invoice, then it immediately reduces that document's total. And so I have to kind of look back in there. Now I can use a subtotal item to show it within the document. Here's the subtotal of everything. Now I can show the payments. And that could work. But my thing is I like to keep things clean. I like to, uh, I like to present things a certain way so that things are very clear and eliminate all the potential questions. And anyway, that's my feeling. So that's why I don't choose to show any kind of form of payment within the body of the invoice. I like to show it separately. So I record an invoice, in this case, for example, with a total of $79,999.99. Um, I don't have the sales taxes turned on in the sample company file. But obviously, that would need to be addressed. You'd need to be charging sales tax for this. So the main thing here is I wanted to show you how to deal with the trade-in part. So let's save this. And let's say that uh, Mr. Always Right is giving me a trade-in that we have valued at $5,000. I'm simply going to come in here and receive a payment. OK, and we'll put Always Right. and. I want to give him credit for having paid $5,000 on this. And the payment method, we, we can add a new payment method and actually call it trade-in. Right, we can bring this in here. And then we have to tell QuickBooks sort of what is this equivalent to? Is it cash? Is it check? It's really something you're not really going to find anything. So we'll just call it other because there's no, no, nothing's going to be on here that fits. Obviously, this isn't a traditional kind of payment method. In the memo, I'd put detailed notes, you know, what was being traded in 1995, Audi A4, you know, whatever it is, dot, dot, dot. And then, of course, the question is, what do we do? Now, here's the challenge to this. Here's why this is tricky. So far, everything I've shown you is obviously very simple, no real challenge to it. But what happens is, first of all, I'm not actually getting this money. So what happens when I make the deposit, 
is I have my five thousand dollar trade in payment effectively in there, but it's not going to go into a bank account. It's going to go into this inventory clearing account that I've created, and you're going to see why it has to go there in a second. And that's when I'm going to explain what the real challenge here is. Because so far everything's simple. I I showed the five thousand dollar payment on the invoice in the form of the trade in, and I can actually deposit it to an other current asset account, my inventory clearing account, save and close. Boom. So let's take a look here at the chart of accounts real quick and let's see what we've got. I've got my $5,000 in inventory clearing. If I want, I can go back to the invoice and show there's the $80,000 and it's got payments applied of $5,000. So I've accomplished uh, you know, one important piece of it, which is showing, reflecting the fact that I'm giving the customer credit for having compensated me at least the extent of $5,000 based on the trade-in. Now the, the challenge here is I need to get that trade-in into my inventory. And I can't just put it into the inventory account, into the inventory asset account, because the problem is I need for that trade-in to show up here in my item list, right? So what I'll need to do, and that's why I put it into the clearing account, is it goes into, that's kind of a placeholder, so I got the value in there. Now I have to take this value of $5,000 out of the inventory clearing, stick it in the inventory asset, but make sure that I've accounted for it as a new item in my item list because then presumably I'm going to take that car, fix it up or auction it, whatever I'm going to do with it. I need to sh reflect that I do have this item with a quantity of one in inventory. And how we're going to do that is we're going to actually enter a bill. But here's the trick to this because I'm not actually going to need to pay anybody for this, right? I, I gave somebody a car in exchange for this, among other things. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get that clearing account zeroed out. So I'm in my expenses tab, and it's inventory clearing. And what I want to do is I want to put a minus 5,000. That gets it out of the inventory clearing account. Then I come here into my items tab, and I'm going to create a new item. 2000 and what did I say it was? I don't remember. Let's say it's a 2005 Audi A4 that he traded in. We're going to add it into the item list real quick, right? It's an inventory part. My cost is $5,000 on it. Might as well put that in there. I don't know what I'm going to sell it for. Let's say 7000 Okay, we click OK. Oops, got to specify an income account. We'll just put that to sales. And so now I've got an item set up. I've got my quantity of one. I've got my $5,000 cost in here for a total of 5,000. But because I'm zeroing out the clearing account, look what happens to my bill. You can even, what I would suggest is, because you're gonna need to put a vendor in here, call this, um, call this trade-in inventory. And the reason why that's very handy is because that gives me a vendor name, which is a vehicle in a sense within QuickBooks by which I can account for uh, any trade-ins that have taken place. I know if I'm using this vendor all the time to deal with these trade-in transfers that I can I can access them through this vendor at any given time. So it's very handy to have kind of one conventional vendor name here that I'm using for all these types of transactions. The bill is zero. We'll quick add that. The bill comes to zero. Save and close. Mission accomplished. Go to lists, item lists. I sold the A8, that's no longer in stock, but now I've got an A4 in stock with a quantity of one, a price of 7,000, and if I customize my columns here and choose to include the cost, you'll see here that it's got the cost in there of $5,000. I hope you found this helpful. Please post your comments below. As always, email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com if you have any questions. Visit my Knowledge Center, NerdEnterprises.com forward slash knowledge. If you haven't been there already, got lots of great full-length tutorials and Excel templates that you can download to help you out with all these sort of things. And if you'd like additional help with this, give me a call. I'm available for private training, 866-945-8070. I do hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. We're bringing back an old one with a new tip on accounting for trade-ins. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 and I'll get you over whatever hump you encounter with respect to QuickBooks and other software programs that you want to use to help increase the efficiency and the productivity within your business. We always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards.